Hello everyone and welcome back to Westeros Craft Walks. I'm your host Kobe and I'm Lucia and today we are gonna take a look at uh, White Harbor. We are in King's Landing at the moment so uh, yeah we just came from Rosby. We gotta take a big boat for for uh, to get up north. It's uh, quite a long distance to to go um, but yeah this is uh, the Mudgate. You might remember it all the way back from our first episode on King's Landing uh, but back then I didn't use shaders, so you, you get to see it with some nice shaders. Get to see all, all of the big boats. Uh, but we got to pick one, right Lucia? We mm. got to pick one to go all the way you up north. You must pick the fanciest, most elegant boat. Yeah, I think um, I think if I believe so, the flagship of uh, like uh, Joffrey, I think it is now, yeah. The flagship of Joffrey, or like House Lannister Barat and whatever you call it of, of King's Landing uh, is uh, all the way down there so we'll try and see if you can get to that one but yeah also uh, I think that's one of those boats is where we started our first uh, King's Landing episodes but back then I think this side of the harbor wasn't completely finished yet so we didn't really show it and we're not gonna really show it in this episode either because I think we got the both boat uh, right over there Oh yeah, you can see the flags there, Baratheon and Lannister colors. So what do you think of that boat, Lucia? It's a nice boat. Seems nice. But, yeah. you know, there's a lot of options going on. Yeah, I guess. we got to think about our budget, the, you know, yeah. we keep the show on a budget. Yeah, Here's, guess, here's our boat, everyone. Here's our boat, yeah. Budget boat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we gotta get more views so we can um, afford better boats to yeah. travel, <laughs> travel Westeros. But yeah, we are gonna sail down the black water, yeah, black water, uh, into Blackwater Bay, and then uh, we're gonna go all the way up north. Nice view for from uh, like uh, the Red Keep over there, on top of Aegon's High Hill. So this is uh, my little hand represents our boat. So we're rowing all the way up north to the only city in the north, White Harbor. So we are at. Uh, at the mouth of the White Knife over here, the river where White Harbor is built on. Our first little lighthouse there. And um, yeah, you can't really, it looks like the ocean because it's, it's so big, but this is a river. You'll, you'll be able to a see it in a, a big one. Yeah, you'll, see, you'll be able to uh, see it when, when we get into render distance. Over there moved a little further you can kind of see the start of the city there but what do we have in front of us Lucia seal rock seal rock exactly I can seal the rock so seal rock is a massive stone dominating the approaches of the outer harbor it's crowned with a ring fort of wood stones which is actually back from the first men that stood desolate and abandoned for centuries However, the Mandalese, who the White Harbor is the seat of, they actually fortified it with crossbowmen, scorpions, and spitfires, because actually, strategically, it's a very important place. I like the mouth of the river. Mm -hmm. You can see it on here on the map. And the stone looms are, in canon says, 50 feet above the water, with a green-gray color to the water, the water and the rock. rock. Well, it says green grey in colour and it talks about the waters I but I think with all the moss rock. it's like yeah. the rock but also one thing we can do on the server as well is um, when when terraforming is being done when they put different biomes on the water they can change the colour so that's oh, why yeah. sometimes you'll see um, the water in different regions be different colours mm. like swamps and stuff there, this green there but they have this nice little pot up to the fortification so as you, oh yeah. Oh, so I was gonna say that it's also called seal rock because seals do actually sit here. As oh well. yeah, that Actual reminds seals. me. We will see some seals in a moment. <coughs> that kind of Is that a gives. Seal noise? Uh, yeah, I guess <coughs> that was kind <coughs> of a seal. You give me a fish, father. There we go. You see the seal, the chair. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess they they don't go hungry. Um, but yeah, this is the fortification that Lucia was uh, was talking about. So this was originally built by the first man. Um, but then when the Manderlees came to uh, hold the area and they built White Harbor on top of it, then they, they kind of yeah fortified it, like you said. 
Um, but we will get uh, more into like how White Harbor was built and stuff in I think maybe the next part or one is in the future parts. Because uh, it has a whole story about how the Manderleys came to control this area. Because as you might uh, know, there is a river in uh, the reach called the Mander. But I know with um, Seal Rock as well, there's some information with Davos and Seal Rock talking about oh, Peter, yeah. but I don't think it's from the first book. So. No, yeah, that's later on. Yeah, that. in that, uh, in that but that's yeah, what that Davos, big, uh, that big um, pile of black coal-looking stuff is. So yeah, th this is the outer harbor to the right over here. Um, there are those two uh, pillars that I zoomed into. Over there, that's where the inner harbor begins, but we won't go inside that now. We're gonna go around the inner harbor, more up the river, and we're gonna gonna get off uh, in the northern sprawl of White Harbor. And uh, we're gonna explore the northern area as well. We're not actually gonna go inside of the city in this uh, episode. We're just teasing you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, and we, instead, Toby will... wants to get off in the north. Well, get, yeah, I want to get off. <laughs> So yeah, we, we're we're um, on the river now, like, and to the right. Oh, yeah. This is part of the inner harbor, which is quite nice. I think it's like a lighthouse, if I saw correctly. It has like, not from Wood this. At the top. I think it's even glass. If I think we see it in <laughs> at the sure. at the end of the. And again, White Harbor itself is quite fancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, the the crenellations over there are quite nice. But yeah, coming up over here, you have even an other little harbor there that's actually where they built the ships uh, we will end uh, we will end up uh, there at the end of the episode you can kind of see it there but we will take a closer look in the, at the end but to touch on what Kobe was talking about earlier about this being one of the only cities in the north I think where that comes from is that compared to places like Wintertown which would be another major town in the north it's not really got the same infrastructure and scale as White Harbor and most of the north you can't really live in in the winter or well, higher well, than... It's hard to live it, Yeah, it's not really that pleasant. You're, it, you can't really grow crops and you have to really rely on um, hunting and gathering. Because I know, I know that I guess I could preserve certain foods with salt but... And I know that works really well with fish but... And that wouldn't be that healthy of a diet. I know they're not really caring about healthy diets and whatnot, but yeah, well, imagine, imagine all that sort of yeah. Not great. Well, the Vikings did it, I guess. It's, it's, it, it was something with like uh, cod liver oil, something in that, that that gives them all the vitamins. But yeah. Um, My mom was obsessed with that. <laughs> Yeah, we're kind of diverse, verging a little bit now, so we are, we found a little inn in the north of uh, White Harbor. Uh, so we... Cozy. Yeah. Actually, actually, I think it's just a tavern, because there is only like one proper bedroom, so... But we'll take that bedroom to sleep in, so... Might be the tavern's owner, but uh, as you can see, this is kind of a communal area. But... Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. I guess. I guess they they're they're not that picky. I guess if they're not too fancy, but we will if take. If they get drunk the, enough, they can just sleep on the floor. Yeah, we will take the the separate room over here. Yeah, so that's where we came from. We sailed all the way to here, and this is like where the where the little inn is, just to give you a point of reference. So we are gonna take go north um, and find some other nice areas in the surrounding lands of White Harbor because everyone wants to see White Harbor but White Harbor actually has one of the, the I, I think most interesting and quite beautiful as well like terraforming on the server um, you will see that as well near the end of the series where I think we will go to the to the east side of White Harbor they got like nice braided rivers but uh, yeah in here they have nice forests later we will have a look at uh, some really nice bogs and swamps as well, like quite, quite unique areas. But uh, what do you think of, of the little walk Lucia this far? Um, yeah. Well, I, I guess we, we did more sailing than walking, but like... Uh, Westeros Craft Sails? Yeah. Oh yeah, here is a, a nice farm. 
So it kind of blocks the road, but I guess uh, they use this area to to herd uh, animals as well. But White Harbour, I mean, if you think about castles in the north, I think I might actually say that I prefer White Harbour to Winterfell. You mean as in the castle itself, or just like well, the, the, the castle and like the, 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 the town? Like, oh yeah, and like, the, yeah, kind of like the building in general. Yeah. I like the colour scheme. I like the castle and the layout. I'm not saying that I don't like White Har- um, I don't like Winterfell, but I feel like there's a really rich history in White Harbour as well, and aesthetically, that helps it win yeah. for me. I, I think it, it's also a point that like because the the Manderleys came from the well near the Mander in the in the Reach, they kind of brought that Reach style as well. And also they're mermaids. Yeah, they are mermaids or merman, <laughs> I believe. Merman. I think there's I'm a merman. I'm also mermaid. I'm a merman. Yeah. <sighs> so over here, you you'll be able to see the the river again. You can kind of see the other bank over there as well, but just faintly. Yeah, that's something you see as well with it being in like the south of the north, is that it has more contact with the south of the country, and you see that a lot with there being the faith of the seven being a stronger religion in. White Harbour, mm. then the, uh, the Old Gods, how it is in... Um, the rest of the North. Yeah, kind of the rest of the North. Oh yeah, but here, this is a quite an interesting little build as well. Uh, this is a, is a glass maker, glass maker's hamlet, but not just normal glass. They, they, they make forest glass, which I didn't know was a thing before this. There's like a specific type of glass named forest glass. And uh, they make it by mixing sand, which they would get from the nearby river, with uh, ash and like I think I think it's mainly ash from the woods around. They make a oh, mixture. Oh, like a smoky, dark glass. Uh, I think it's more like green glass. I, I, yeah, I look, when I looked on like real life pictures, it was more oh, like green. Co- yeah, like that kind of color. Oh, cool. But uh, then I think in the Middle Ages there was quite a lot of uh, that kind of glass in there. I like, uh, like well, it especially goes this. well with the house colors, which yeah. are more of a green and blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they mix they mix sand with ashes, and then they make glasses out of that, and that's how how forest glass is made, and that's also the reason why it's made in the forest. Uh, but as you can see, you've got uh, like normal living houses around the outside, centered around the central uh, working space space uh, and uh, forges. No, I don't think. Are they called forges for glass? Wouldn't it just like, be um I've forgotten all my words. A, a furnace. furnace? Maybe. Like a central furnace that everyone uses. Yeah, they got that we'll see it in a moment. They got uh, they got a few of them uh, Maybe on like the, the outside. Master forge or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, because there was a big one in the middle, but then on the outside you got some more. So here is wood stores, here is probably where they burn it into ash. Smoky. Mm-hmm. Then they, they got a little wheelbarrow with ash. And uh, here are those uh, furnaces that, uh, that I was talking about. Lucia was pointing to a house. Well, what... I was pointing to my house. Oh, is that your house? <laughs> yes. the, the, one, the one to the left now? Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Beautifully decorated house. Yeah. So here you can see them uh, making the glass. But I, I think it's a really good idea to have a, a hamlet that's just dedicated to glass blowing because if you think about, especially with it being such a big city, they're going to use a lot of glass. So to have a dedicated place rather than individual um, hamlets or individual houses, sorry, you can create a bigger quantity. And with it not being individual glass blowers in a community and it just being one master building they all work in. They can kind of monopolize on it more, where it mm. it's all they work there, but they're not really producing it for themselves. themselves. Yeah, yeah. So they can kind of control the prices a bit more. Yeah, I guess that's how like companies are formed and stuff. Um, but yeah, there another little look at the river. But then we are gonna go north pretty soon, hopefully. I think I'm just gonna. Oh, but these bigger. bricks on the floor here, there's kind of pebbles. Or the little blocks, they're, yeah. they're the newer pebbles that have been introduced on the server. And they've, they've got a really rich, diverse colour scheme for them. But they also have a wet and dry version, so you can use them in parts and you can also use them in lakes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this is kind of to visualise again. We are 
and the north this is where we are going to the little bog swamp that I was talking to earlier which we will have a look at now yeah we do have lots of information about House Mandalay but I think it's best if we talk about that when we get to the main city yeah yeah so for now we'll just, that is some nice surrounding yeah or is that like, like meant to be like heather or something on the yeah ground? yeah like the the purple ones are probably heather yeah but i was saying but, to kobe uh, when we were looking at this initially it kind of reminds me of um the witcher mm -hmm. when you first start and they've got that nice kind of, well i'd say nice mm -hmm. but there's monsters yeah. everywhere <laughs> yeah um, valen valen in yeah. the witcher like how the swamp is you'll see that in a moment as well like when we see the remains of uh of um what used to be a nice place but uh yeah this is kind of a built within a build because this is also uh the lands that used to be greenwood of house greenwood which is an extinct house from quite a while ago um the kings of always winter back in the day uh they kind of wiped out the house uh, i'm not sure if there is a reason for it but that was kind of the the, the history that uh, it was House Greenwood was a house of the first man, but then when the Starks of Winterfell like kind of became powerful, they wiped him out for one reason or another. And we'll see their little seat in a moment as well when we go through the bog. They also got these nice walkways. Yeah, here is um, one of the settlements that you can see. Uh, you can kind of see the remnants of it, and you can can also see that it's sinking in the bog but uh, we will have a look at it in the morning as well because it's getting quite dark right Lucia yes yeah you don't like the dark yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's morning but aesthetically yeah. this is very nice yeah very picturesque exactly well, I mean as the, picturesque as it is yeah. to look at a ruined like town that's sinking in the mud and aren't and, we all just sinking in the mud I'm, yeah and, and i'm not <laughs> i'm not sure why but like they're excavating the mud here as well i'm not exactly sure why uh but we Very are smart <laughs> <laughs> yes lu uh, 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 lucrative industry in white well, harbor there is one in turkey that i went to which is like a mud bar and fun story um they told me not to move so I decided to walk around and I fell off the step and almost drowned in mud because I fell under the mud and it kind of sucked oh. me in. So be careful. This could be ghost Lucia if, but luckily someone pulled me out and I didn't I... die. Oh yeah. Also, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so silly. Yeah. On that fun note, um, also, uh, like some of the, the professions that could be done in bogs, because uh, I'm talking about my personal channel as well, again. Uh, I actually made quite a few videos of uh, professions that could be done in areas like this. For example, uh, bog iron hunting. Bog iron hunter! Yeah, bow, 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 yeah you, you, bow, could, bow. you could actually find deposits of iron that would form inside of the bog, so you wouldn't need to go into the mountains to mine it. You could just like poke the ground with a stick in bogs. And... Maybe that's what they were doing. Yeah, or maybe, know. yeah. yeah. Yeah, also, uh, oh yeah, these are the ruins, by the way, of uh, House Greenwood. Um, but also what uh, what you could do, as Lucia was saying her earlier, like the green, uh, the, not the green, the purple kind of plants, they tend to be heather, they like boggy areas, and they're like a really good fuel source, so people would also gather heather to use as fuel, just in case if there's not any like trees nearby. And uh, another uh, interesting profession that would be done here would be leech collecting, especially with the Boltons of the north. You know, Ruiz Bolton, he likes mm -hmm. his leeches. Um, so yeah, uh, hopefully the Dreadfort also has like a nice little swamp like this and then uh, Ruiz Bolton can have all the leeches he wants. Uh, but yeah, all of those professions I've made videos about on my personal channel. If you're interested in learning more about them, there will be a link at the uh, at the end of the video, if, you, if you're interested. How do leeches have babies? Um, question. I guess, I guess they... Do you know they, they... I can't imagine they'd lay eggs. They, I think they Maybe. might actually, because they're, they they're quite gross. primitive. 
they're quite primitive in like the evolutionary sense but yeah you see uh, here as well that uh, someone has taken advantage of the ruins and uh, set up camp maybe some some thieves and, and naughty people like uh, oh, don't want to go through that door just doesn't seem quite nice as he tries to go through the door again <laughs> yeah there was a little school there so yeah you can see they've, they've set up uh, a little camp here well I mean it's got the Part infrastructure and it's not really boggy here and I can't imagine if, if it was a criminal camp which most likely it would be uh, like bandits they're not really going to be bothered here mm. but how do they get in I think they magically yeah. fly yeah um, I think it might be that back door that we saw where the that back little door of is, murder yeah. Yeah, lots of lots of mosquitoes here as well so we're getting out through the forest uh, we're gonna end up here in a moment, like a little closer to White Harbor again. And uh, then we are gonna go into the White Harbor sprawl, the northern sprawl. So that's where we are, just for a point of reference. So we are in the woods going down again to the, to the actual city. Uh, which you will get a glimpse of in this episode, so don't worry. Um, here we can see some logging going on some logging camps and a nice lake so what, what do you guys think of the surroundings of uh, of uh, White Harbor very nice very nice yes okay so um, as we walk along this forest path uh, is there anything else we can talk about that we haven't saved for for a future video Mm, one thing that's quite interesting, but it won't be in this video, so there's actually a Stark Manse. Oh yeah, around, um, yeah. To the east of White Harbour, like the forests of White Harbour. There's also, um, I think the, because the, the area of White Harbour before it was owned by the Manderleys, like quite a few houses from the surrounding area, like owned the area as well, or like were, were in charge of defending the river as well. So there are quite a few little um, projects around here, like Holt, but I think Holt, uh, Holt is over that way actually. But I think we'll keep that for a separate episode. Um, but yeah, there is a start of the sprawl. Well, I guess here is already the start, but this is a, a little river flowing into the, the harbour. I think past this river is where the, the actual official sprawl begins. We actually have an interesting um, location to the left over here. I don't know if you want to want to talk about that location. It's the graveyard. Well, not not this. This is just a random house. I would say like the bread's offended. Like, <laughs> I'm dead. No, yeah, but uh, on the other side of the road over here, we got the graveyard. So I think you found that initially. Like yeah, I was doing a. Cause I built. Um, I, well, I helped on a house around here and then afterwards I was just exploring around and I found this really nice graveyard. Spooky. Ooh. Yeah. Ghost so who, noises. Who is buried here, Lucia? Someone. Someone? Someone like you. Ooh. Anyone important? Um, yeah. There's some spooky, spooky, scary skulls. But also, um, I know that underneath the castle in of uh, White Harbor, there is. Um, I've forgotten all my is words. Is there a dungeon? I need or to have a like crypt? a keyword list of like what things are. Dungeon. Um, or there's crypt. a there's a crypt underneath mm. White Harbor, but I also think due to how fancy, how big, and all of the banners, this is also kind of like a, maybe like an overflow, mm. or perhaps this is from the first. Um, few lords. Yeah, well, uh, there's also Manderleys, like we saw the Manderley banner, but that, that area where we were in before, that was probably like another, because to the left was like the another banner. But you got quite a few Manderleys in spread around as well, but they can't all be Manderleys, I imagine. Yeah, it might be like um, outcrops of the family. Mm -hmm. I know there's another big one here, mm -hmm. um, but, but underneath nice the forts. castle itself, there's also a crypt. But then the quite interesting thing that we'll get onto, it will probably have its whole own episode because there's so much history, is something called the Wolf's Den in um, the town of White Harbour, which yeah. is actually the original keep. 
Yeah, we'll see it in a moment as well. You get a little sneak peek near the end of the episode. So. And there, interestingly enough, is actually um, a quite a nice weirwood tree. So it kind of shows how um, the older Lord, like lords, the older houses. they worship the old gods, and then now it's kind of changed into the faith, New, yeah. faith of the seven, but people still do worship the old, the gods. old gods, but it's just they're in the minority now. Are they in the minority? Yeah, I think? we're saying that mo- most people worship the faith of the seven in White Harbor. Oh, okay. It's I'd... like the more of the mi- majority religion, but there are still followers of the old gods, but it's oh. just not it's not 50-50, it's more in favor of the faith. Oh, okay. Oh, that's something interesting. I didn't notice that before. But uh, well, There are quite a few yeah. sects in the main town as well, some very nice ones. Yeah, yeah, like the snowy sect. Yeah. That's quite interesting. Yeah. Thanks for reading the wiki or like reading the research. You're welcome. But yeah, one one page that we use a lot of our research from is the A Song of Ice and Fire wiki because there it's quite interesting. It breaks down into which books certain information comes from, which helps when we're trying to stick to book one, series one. So there will be information. There's a lot of information on um, White Harbor and the Mandalays that happens after book one, series one. Mm-hmm. But we just can't talk about it, which means if you really enjoy certain builds and certain houses, I definitely recommend either reading the books or reading the mm-hmm. wiki, The Song of Ice and Fire, and it will go down quotes from characters and um, places where it's mentioned in specific books. Or, or if you're not interested in reading, listen to the audiobook. It's pretty good. I, I listen to it. Use code Kobe. No, I'm <laughs> no, kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we haven't got a we haven't got a, a sponsorship yet. But we're I'm currently <laughs> listening, in case anyone's interested, to the the Witcher series we're both listening to. Mm-hmm. But that one, if you look if you just look at it, some of the stuff kind of ties in with this type of era. Yeah, but it's more fantasy in The yeah. Witcher. Well, I mean, so is Game of Thrones, really. Yeah, yeah, but I, it, I think Game of Thrones has got a lot of reality, but then like. Mm-hmm lots of heavy influence from fantasy whereas Witcher seems more fantasy but it still yeah. it still looks good but just because I'm very bad I don't tend to read or listen to books I'm very much of like a film game TV show person shame I know I'll do my walk of penance later um, but I finally get it from listening to the audiobook and then when you watch trailers of things and you're like, what? That doesn't oh, make like, sense. Oh, like you mean as in like book fans commenting on yeah. like when a book is adapted to series? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, like, yeah, you can once you once you know the actual story written by the author and see how that sometimes changed in the TV adaptations. Like, mm-hmm. I understand why people like get annoyed. Yeah, but season one of Game of Thrones, I think because they had so much information to go off from the books. Yeah. It was really well done, but when we're only talking about season one, book one, so you can shed a tear at home. Well, we, we can talk later as well, just no major spoilers, because like the series is over. Like I, I think if you haven't watched it yet, you're never going to watch it, are you? But yeah, we, Maybe we we'll are, inspire people to watch it. I guess so. We are in a tannery at the moment, um, so it's quite a big one. So I was uh, for, at first I was thinking, oh, it might be a lime burner, because they, they had that uh, pile of white stuff there. I imagine that would be quicklime, um, but quicklime they actually use in the in the tanning process as well. So that must be their little storage. But they storage. also can use quicklime in um, brick making. In a, well, mortar, yeah. Oh yeah, mortar yeah, for it, doing building. It's quite uh, versatile, like uh, quicklime. And quite dangerous. Quite dangerous as well. Especially if you want to, wet. if you want to know more about quicklime, <laughs> click click my medieval professions playlist at the end of the video because uh, I made a video on quick climb as well like what it was used for how dangerous it was and it can be used for quite a lot of stuff it goes back a long time I also imagine that uh, no actually oh yeah, oh yeah that's actually the wolf stand what uh, Lucia was talking about earlier the the old keep that uh, was there to protect the the, the river but um, I think, I'm not 100% sure, I think they imported those white stones from the south to build White Harbor, I think. But I, think that's the, I think that's the lore, I'm not 100% sure. But uh, what they 
would have done as well in the Middle Ages is to get that white finish if they only had grey stones and stuff. They could have just used quicklime to uh, whitewash it, is the word. So that's the same with daub and wattle houses. You can whitewash it to make it seem more fancy, and you can do the same with uh, but it will with still stone. be made of poo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah so poo, mud, and straw. Here we're getting closer to the the ship uh, shipwrights, which we. Uh, drove uh, uh, road past uh, in the beginning. So to build ships you need ropes, so that was a rope maker and uh, I was kind of looking for the rope walk here but doesn't seem like they have one here. So, uh, but I was not disappointed later on when I did eventually find the rope walk as you will be able to see in a moment. Uh, yeah, some stables as well. But I think that the sign for that, with the, the shears underneath it, is actually for doing the new shoes on horses. Oh right, yeah. Oh, what was the name for that? I, I knew the name for, like it has a specific name, someone who uh, who reshoes horses. It's in my it's in my list somewhere of like the professions, but uh, Lucia's looking it up. Oh, that's just she's just got tutorials of, on how to do it. But uh, yeah, here is actually now I know how to reshoe a horse. <laughs> so um, I think it's like a filler or something. No, it's, uh, that's filler or something else. But this is done by a farrier. Yeah, farrier. That's it. I knew it was with an F. Yeah, farrier is the word. But this F's is in the, the chat bros. This is the rope walk, and I was like, this is a very nice rope walk. Nice, nice and long. They've actually got one uh, like this, I think even longer in King's Landing docks, which we didn't see, but uh, yeah. When we think about the bigger the ship, the bigger the mast, the longer the rope you need, because mm -hmm. it will have to go from the very top to the bottom, and then have plenty of room for people to pull. Yeah, exactly. But that is one nice looking butt of a ship. Yeah, that, that one is still being built. It will be a mighty fine vessel. Yeah, we'll uh, have a look at the top. Over here. Oof, Oof! I fell through the net. He's been caught! <laughs> yeah, but this is a. Uh, that, that I do agree, the butt of the, the ship is uh, quite nice. But I think the, the block that's been used for it is like the adapted arrow slit windows. With glass behind it. Yeah, so this is that little harbor that we were uh, rowing past when it was so dark earlier. Uh, but yeah. That was. Do, 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 oh, actually, do, do, do. like there, there is a lighthouse. I think it has glass on the top, but we will have a closer look at that when we look at the inner harbor uh, in the future sometime. And uh, I, oh yeah, we also have to mention uh, next week we are on holiday, so um, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, miss. yeah. Next week we're on holiday, so um, there's gonna be one week without Westeros craft walks. <gasps> so yeah. Uh, it will be in two weeks that we're back with another White Harbor episode. Um, we are going to Vienna. I think I'll probably like tweet or like make maybe make a video on, on that on my personal channel. I don't know. So yeah, if you want, you can find my Twitter somewhere. I might tweet. Uh, who knows? Um, there is a video of Lucia feeding some koi fish on there. Yeah, so. there is. There is. If you go to my Twitter page and go to. Uh, I think it's not on my normal feed, but if you go to like the media tab or something like that, it's there's a there's a little video of Lucia feeding fish on there. It was fun. Yeah. Oh, and Lucia and the goats. Lucia and the goats. That's that was most fun. Yeah. Yeah. And even as grown ups, it's like whenever we go somewhere new, I'm like, do they have a zoo? We have to go. Mm -hmm. I want to see the baby animals. Do they have a petting zoo? Yeah. I want to touch some baby goats. And not in that way, guys. I like baby goats. Yeah. I'm not. Kidding. <laughs> okay. Baby goat support kids. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, yeah. That, so I'll, I'll probably link. Uh, I'll link my Twitter with along with Westroscroft uh, social media down in the description. But that was it for this episode. We are gonna leave over here. Uh, this is the Wolf's Gate. I don't know. It just suddenly turned lighter. I don't know why. But uh, this is the Wolf's Gate. This is where we will leave you for this episode. So thanks for watching. Uh, on screen right now, you can find that playlist that I was talking about, my Medieval Professions playlist. You can also find the playlist of Westworld's Craft Walks, as well as uh, maybe some cinematics. I'll put those on there as well. Hopefully, Veggie will make one on, on White Harbor as well. Bye, guys!